All right, so now let's look at the determinants of aggregate demand. So let's briefly review what we learned in the previous lesson about aggregate demand. Uh, we're going to, over here, we're going to do uh, an increase in aggregate demand and a decrease in aggregate demand. So when aggregate demand increases, right, so then we're going to put an up arrow. So an increase in aggregate demand means that the aggregate demand curve is going to shift to the right. And so over here, we're going to have a D prime. And you can see here that our new intersection of aggregate demand with short-run aggregate supply is right here. So if we come over to the side, we get CPI prime. And so you can see here that, that uh, the consumer price index has increased when aggregate demand goes up. So that's, a, that's an increase in inflation, okay? So an increase in aggregate demand is going to lead to an increase in the consumer price index. And then over here, if we go to the vertical, you can see from here, let's go down to here, and that's going to be real GDP prime. And you can see that from where we were before, we have an increase in real GDP. So when aggregate demand increases, that's going to be an increase in output in the economy, an increase in the stuff produced, an increase in real GDP, which makes sense because when people demand more stuff, their willingness and ability to buy has gone up, well, then people are going to make more stuff and they're going to buy more stuff. And so there's an increase in the output. Okay. All right, over here, let's now look at the situation where we have a decrease in aggregate demand in the economy. So if aggregate demand goes down in the economy, that means that in general, people are buying less stuff. Okay, businesses are buying less stuff, consumers are buying less stuff, governments are buying less stuff. Uh, so if we have a decrease in aggregate demand, that means a leftward shift of the aggregate demand curve, which is going to be over here. We'll put A, D prime. Okay, so our new aggregate demand curve. And so here's our new intersection point, or yeah, intersection point of the short run aggregate supply curve and the aggregate demand curve. And if we go over to the side here, you can see that CPI prime the consumer price index has gone down. We have a decrease in the consumer price index. And so a decrease in aggregate demand is going to lead to a decrease in consumer price index. And also, uh, our output is also going to decrease. We're going to have a decrease in real GDP. So there's real GDP prime, and we have a decrease in real GDP. So output in the economy will go down. We will produce less stuff when aggregate demand decreases, which makes sense. If people are demanding less stuff out there in the economy, businesses are going to produce less stuff, they're going to uh, sell less stuff, and people are going to consume less stuff. So we already learned this in a previous lesson, and now what we want to do is we want to try and understand what uh, in the economy will cause an increase in aggregate demand or a decrease in aggregate demand, okay? All right, so I want to remind you about something, that aggregate demand represents all the buyers for final use. Which are households, firms, and governments. as well as buyers of domestic goods in other countries. Which is, which we consider, we call net exports. And so what you're seeing here is this, is do you recall that all of the stuff that is purchased for final use by households we have a name for that, and that name is consumption. Consumption is, is the summation of all of the sales of all the stuff to households in, in a, an economy. All the stuff that's purchased for final use by firms, we call that investment. All 
all of the stuff that's purchased for final use by governments is called government spending. And then the net of all of everything purchased by uh, people and governments and businesses in other countries uh, minus all the stuff that we purchase from other countries, so exports minus imports, that's called net exports. And here's what I want to remind you. If aggregate demand is made up of all of the stuff that is demanded by households, firms, governments, and people in other countries, then what that basically means is that aggregate demand is made up of consumption plus investment plus government spending plus net exports. And I want to remind you, if we go way back, that we actually have a name for this, and it is total expenditures. We learned that several lessons ago. So here's what I want you to understand is that aggregate demand basically is total expenditure. It is equivalent to total expenditure in an economy. And so what we're going to say here is this, is that the main avenue through which aggregate demand is affected in an economy is through total expenditure in the economy. And so we're going to say that total expenditure is the main thing that affects aggregate demand in an economy. And it's very simple. It's a direct relationship. When total expenditure goes up, aggregate demand goes up. Meaning, when households and businesses and governments and people in other countries, when they want to buy more stuff produced in this country, that's an increase in total expenditure. And so that me and that is the idea of all those parties demanding more stuff. So these two concepts, total expenditure and aggregate demand, go hand in hand. When one of them goes up, the other one goes up too. And so a decrease in aggregate demand will result from a decrease in total expenditure in the economy. All right? And so now what I want to do is I'm going to have to erase this, okay, is we understand, I'm going to leave this formula down here, we have to understand that total expenditure is, by this formula, made up of consumption, investment, government spending, and net exports. And here's what you need to understand, is that this number will go up. Total expenditure will increase if any one of these four categories increases. If consumption increases, total expenditure will increase. If investment increases or government spending increases or net exports goes up, then total expenditures will go up. But if any one of these four categories decreases, if households spend less money in the economy, then total expenditure will go down. If the government spends less money in the economy, total expenditure will go down. And therefore, what I'm going to put here is this, is that we'll get an increase in total expenditure if we have an increase in consumption in the economy or if we have an increase in investment in the economy or if we have an increase in government spending in the economy or if we have an increase in net exports in the economy. If any one of these four categories of total expenditure increases, then total expenditure will increase aggregate demand will increase, the aggregate demand curve will shift to the right, we'll have an increase in, the, in CPI, and we'll have an increase in real GDP. However, if any of these four categories decreases instead, okay, put my four arrows here, if we have a decrease in consumption, total expenditure will go down. If we have a decrease in investment in the economy, total expenditure will go down. If we have a decrease in government spending in the economy, total expenditure will go down. If we have a decrease in net exports in the economy, total expenditure will go down. And then aggregate demand will go down. The aggregate demand curve will shift to the left. 
we'll have a decrease in the price level and we'll have a decrease in real GDP in the economy. Okay? And so this is the, uh, the large scale macro view of what affects aggregate demand. It's important for you to understand these mechanisms. If I ask you what happens to real GDP when investment goes up, you have to know that an increase in investment will lead to an increase in real GDP. If I ask you what happens to, t to aggregate demand or CPI when government spending goes down, you have to know that a decrease in government spending will lead to a decrease in aggregate demand and a decrease in the consumer price index. Okay, And so these are the macro determinants of aggregate demand. And what we're now going to do in the next part of this lesson is we're going to go to a much more granular level. We're going to look at the more fine-tuned, the more detailed things. The questions we're going to ask now is we're going to ask four questions. What causes consumption to go up or down? Question two, what causes investment to go up or down? Question three, what causes government spending to go up or down? Question four, what causes net exports to go up or down? And once we understand all of the different things, and there's quite a few of them, once we understand all those things that affect these four elements of total expenditure, we can then know in greater detail what things happening out there in the economy will ultimately affect aggregate demand CPI, and real GDP. And that's where we're going to move to in the next video.